Hi, my name is Omar Sidani. I'm 17 years old. I'm from Toronto, Canada, and I'm addicted to going to school. I've been going to school for about 12 years now, actually 14 if you count kindergarten, JK. Omar has been attending Alexander McKenzie High School regularly for the past four years. I, I like the opportunity that I get to learn and develop and hopefully be able to hold a job and live in society when I'm older. His best friend of many years, Joshua, is concerned. Uh, I've known him since about kindergarten, actually, we met. We met in kindergarten. Uh, ironic, huh? We just went on different paths, you know? Like, after kindergarten, I knew what I was doing was unhealthy, and I just kind of dropped out, and he just kept going. He just needed more, always. To try to change something, Joshua decides to confront Omar outside of his building. Bro, why don't you just go into school? It's right there. I don't want to be in here near that place. What? I don't want to... What's the problem? It's not that bad. It's, it's a good place. No. What do you mean, what's the problem? That, that place scares me, Omar. I'm not, I'm not going near there. I'm uncomfortable with that place. Dude, you're, getting, you're there too much. You understand? You're there too much. It's I, only six hours a day. It's, it's you, not that big of a problem. Six hours a day? Do you know how weird that is, Omar? I'm learning. I, I feel like I'm really doing something with my life. What? Why? You could be at home. You could just be doing whatever. Why are you out here trying to change things? I just feel like it's beneficial. I need it in my life. I... You need... Do you understand what you sound like right now? Omar, you have an addiction. You're addicted to this place. You come here every week. You have an addiction! It was just a lot. Like, I... Everyone's trying to act like I'm crazy for liking school and stuff. It's not that big of a deal. Like, it's... It's not that big of an issue, right? I don't know. It's... It's unsettling, you know? It... It... It, it freaks me out, like, you know, just thinking that he's there every day, except weekends. He was, he's my best friend. I didn't expect him to turn his, his cheek on me and kind of just throw me into the bus like that. It wasn't really cool. Josh is not alone in his concern. The people closest to Omar have been worried about him recently as well. He's just throwing his life away. It's just breaking my heart. Yeah, I mean, I guess he's like toxic or whatever. I cut him off. Can I plug something really quickly? We just don't see him anymore. He's never around. We miss him. Wait, you, you, you interviewed my parents for this? Why? Um, my family and friends think I have a real problem with it, and I think six hours is too much of my time in a day to be going somewhere. And I think it's a little ridiculous because I don't see a problem here. It's not affecting anything. Did, did, did they say anything about me? Like, out of curiosity, I'm not like worried. Did they say, did they though? Even the people that Omar regularly attends school with have started noticing there's something off about him and are showing concern as well. Yeah, I come maybe like two, three times a month. But he's always here every time. There's not one time I don't see him. I see him like every time I pass by the calf just to get free food. He's always there in the calf just like studying. I'm like, I'm just here to see my friends, get some free food. That's about it. It's really weird. He makes me uncomfortable. Yeah, there's something wrong with him. For sure. It just doesn't add up to me with however the hell that kid acts. It's just not right. The people that I see at school, I think a lot of them are unmotivated. I, I, I don't think they understand the idea of school. The whole point is to, to learn. And, uh, it's whack. With his addiction only getting worse, Joshua realizes that he must interfere. So, things just aren't changing. It looks like they're not changing, so I had to trick Omar into uh, leaving the school so I could take him somewhere. Hello? Hey, Omar. Hey, what's up? Uh, I, wanted to, uh, I wanted to see if I could pick you up after school. There's um, a sale on school supplies. What? Dude, can I just, can I just pick you up after school? It, it'll be... Dude, that actually sounds great. I'm happy you're turning around. Yeah, I'll be there. Alright, cool. See you later. I didn't feel good about doing it, but... I kind of did. I just hope that he gets the help he needs. You know, man, like, uh, I don't know, I care a lot about him. And I hate to see him throw his life away advancing towards his future. Hey, nice to meet you. I'm Dr. Um, yeah, I'm a doctor. 
This is really unhealthy. Yo. I have to set this straight. Like, you gotta stop, yo. Like, I don't know what the big deal is. Like, I, I know what I'm doing. Everyone, everyone's freaking out over this thing. Yo, it's... I don't know if you do know what you're doing, though. Like, yeah. I don't think you understand how bad this is. Everyone else seems like it's such a bad thing for me, but I feel good when I'm doing school. I've been doing this for like 20 years. Like I'm making so much money and I have like 14 houses. Like, do you really want to end up like me? Like this? I, I, I guess I don't want to end up like you. Like it's a life to live, but yeah, that's what people warn you about. Yeah, I'm just trying to save you before it gets too late. Yeah. Like no. I, I'm, I'm healthy and I'm fine. Like it's not that big of an issue for me. Like I don't even think about school that much. I just, I just do it all the time. It's, it's a part of my daily life, but When Joshua took me to the doctor's office, I honestly felt betrayed. I felt like he really thinks I have a problem or something. Like, before I thought he was just saying it for attention or something. But now he, he's saying it and honestly, I'm starting to believe him a little bit. Uh, the low point for me was when I was walking back from the doctor's office and this, this homeless guy spat on me and called me an achiever. And honestly, it didn't really make me feel good. Like, I, I, I look up to them, I, I respect them. I, I, I don't want to be... I don't, I, don't, I don't even know, man. Like, That's where it happened. That's where the assault began. After the doctor's office, I actually had a really weird dream. I was taking this exam, right? And nothing was coming to my head, and suddenly my pencil was just, like, shattered. And I freaked out, and suddenly I was just in a completely different room, and the, the room was empty, and I went outside, and I tried to see what was happening, and... It was just empty. I felt completely alone. I just remember spending time and hours walking down this building trying to find someone or something. Then out of nowhere I feel this present behind me and it, it was like nothing there. But then when I turned around all of a sudden, I got bombarded by success. It was just crushing me and smothering me. And then I woke up and I was shaking a little bit. I was terrified. It was more of a nightmare. but. Happy the dream was over and it was all a dream because it was my nightmare come to life. I think I had that dream because it's a lot of like my inner demons talking to me, telling me what I'm doing is wrong and I shouldn't achieve in my life because no one ever does. But I think I still feel that I must continue striving in school.